Yuki Tsunoda is the most frustratingly lovable driver on the grid. There is no question that the guy has talent, but so far in F1 after two seasons, I don't think that we've seen anywhere near what I would consider to be his full potential. Even so, for an organization as cutthroat with young drivers as Red Bull are, I think it's fair to say that with Yuki, they have shown patience and given him time. I mean, at the end of his rookie season, even Yuki admitted to being surprised that Red Bull actually kept him on. Up against Gasly, Yuki has only ever been the protege. Just gaining experience and being as close to Gasly as possible has so far been enough. However, with Gasly now gone, and Yuki being the experienced driver at the team, going up against a rookie in Nick De Vries, 2023 is now a completely different ball game. It would be massively oversimplifying to say that just beating De Vries would be enough because it wouldn't. By the end of this season, Yuki will have to either establish himself as a driver worth keeping and putting more time into, or like many other Red Bull Juniors before him, he's going to be gone. What makes Yuki a frustrating driver to watch is that behind the inconsistency and behind the occasional blunders, there's actually a really good driver with a huge amount of raw driving talent. His rise through single-seaters was meteoric to say the least, and I think throughout all of the chaos during his rookie season, I think people forgot just how quickly Yuki went from driving a car for the very first time to reaching the pinnacle of motorsport. Yuki was a Formula 1 driver in just his fifth year of racing cars, and that came off the back of a really impressive Formula 2 season where as a rookie he finished third in the championship, just one point behind Callum Eilat in second, and only 15 points behind the eventual champion Mick Schumacher, both of whom were in their second seasons in Formula 2. Red Bull immediately pounced, and for 2021 Yuki Tsunoda would become an F1 driver with Alpha Tauri. He would become the first driver to race in F1 who was born in the 2000s, and he would also become a Honda success story with one of their graduates reaching Formula 1. All of this made Yuki's rookie season and, to an extent, his 2022 season as well, more than just disappointing but also really frustrating. I am a big Yuki fan. Personally, I have always had an affinity for Japanese car culture, Japanese drivers, and so when a Japanese driver reaches and enters Formula 1, I actively wanted to see him do well. But let me tell you that being a Yuki fan over the last two years has taken years of my life. In 2021, he openly admitted to coming into F1 basically out of shape and in his own words, he was less fit than a 66-year-old Franz Tost. Yuki came into F1 as a very naive person. Even the fact that he was so honest and open in interviews is in a way a sign that he's inexperienced because no one can control the narrative and guide the media about themselves better than the drivers themselves. But Yuki has always been honest, maybe too honest at times in my opinion, but that's just him. Going up against Pierre Gasly was always going to be difficult, but in a way, it also gave Yuki a free pass because there was never the expectation from anyone that he would actually beat Gasly. In the last two years, the role of Yuki has literally been to learn and to try and get as close to Gasly as he could. But even though I do rate Gasly, he was not unbeatable. But the way in which he dominated Yuki was a clear sign that if Yuki didn't improve, he wouldn't be there for long. What made his rookie season even more frustrating is that in 2021, he had a very good car. It was the type of midfield car that most rookies can only dream of. It's one thing to judge a rookie like Mick Schumacher, for example, in 2021 in a backmarker Haas. It's another to be given a car capable of podiums and to completely squander that opportunity. It also then made 2022 even more difficult to judge because although Yuki definitely improved as a driver both on and off the track, because the 2022 Alpha Tauri was actually worse than in 2021, it blurred the picture of how much Yuki had actually improved. Having said that, the level that Yuki drove last season was still not enough. There were still embarrassing incidents which spilled over from his rookie season, 
like crashing whilst leaving the pits in Canada, and then crashing into Gasly in Silverstone, which not only ruined the race for the whole team, but the subsequent debris from the crash is what also damaged Max's floor and took what looked like a simple win away from him as well. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Take yourself and your teammate out, and then also take out the number one driver and championship contender from the team that owns you. Just classic Yuki. That's not to say that Yuki doesn't understand what he needs to do better. During the AlphaTauri launch, he said, My main goal is to perform more consistently in every race, independently from the car's performance and to score points more reliably. I want to be more in control of myself at all times, work well with the team, understand the car as quickly as possible, right from the very first race in Bahrain. I want this year to be my best performance of the three years in terms of getting to Q3 and scoring points. 2023 for Yuki will be all about handling pressure because with a rookie Nick DeVries now as his teammate, when you're the experienced driver in a team, everyone will be looking at Yuki to be the benchmark driver, give the right feedback so the team develops the car well, and it goes without saying, at a minimum, everyone is expecting for you to be able to beat a rookie. However, DeVries is not your run-of-the-mill, average young rookie. In fact, he is the total opposite. Although he's going into his rookie F1 season, he is already a well-accomplished driver being a champion in Formula 2 and Formula E. He's massively experienced having driven for multiple F1 teams in Friday practice sessions and during various tests. And as a person, he's already a very mature and well-rounded racing driver who, unlike Yuki in 2021, won't underestimate the physical and mental demands of racing in Formula 1. It's pretty rare in F1 that your rookie teammate is actually older than you, but with Nick being 28 years old compared to Yuki, who is still just 22, it's just another example of how important it is for Yuki to not underestimate going up against Nick. The challenge with going up against Nick is that just beating him won't be enough. For Yuki to really establish himself at the team, and potentially for him to even start turning heads at some of the other teams around him, which previous AlphaTauri drivers like Sainz and Gasly were able to do, he's got to show that he can dominate De Vries, and then independently that he can also be one of the best drivers in the midfield. Another element that will also be in the mix this year is the fact that Yuki is now not the only Honda-backed Japanese driver that might be in F1 next season. Ayumu Uwasa finished 5th in his rookie Formula 2 season, taking 2 feature race wins, and only finishing 7 points behind 2023 F1 rookie Logan Sargent. Iwasa being next in line means that there isn't that incentive for Honda to try to go to bat for Yuki if he doesn't do well because they already have their next potential Japanese star driver just waiting in the wings. And provided that Iwasa has an even stronger F2 campaign this year, and maybe even challenges for the title, that will put even more pressure on Yuki to keep his seat. Formula 1 is all about managing pressure, and for Yuki in 2023, it's going to be coming in from all angles. He's been thrusted into the team leader role with expectations that he's never had to handle before. He's got one of the most well-prepared F1 rookies ever that everyone expects for him to outperform. And there's plenty of young Red Bull Junior drivers just waiting like piranhas to take his seat in the lower formula. For Yuki to stay in F1, he's got to show that he can take himself to the next level, both in terms of better and more consistent results on the track and in his ability as a team leader who can build the team around him. Now, many people might argue that as long as you're quick, then why does he need to be a great team leader? To that, I would say that when a team, and I'm not specifically talking about Alpha Tauri, but maybe even other potential teams that Yuki might be able to attract in the future, but when a team feels like your value is just as high out of the car as it is in it, it buys you more respect and credibility inside of your team, which will then buy you more time when you do have a bad run of results. I don't know whether to call 2023 the last dance, or to just say that it's all or nothing. I really do believe that if Yuki puts everything together, 
there is a great driver in there somewhere. But if he doesn't put it all together this season, and then especially if he gets beaten by Nick De Vries, then there's no sense in Red Bull, Alpha Tauri, or any other team for that matter, to keep him in Formula 1.